people's uh, problems, just their ordinary day to day, how to use LibreOffice issues, as well as the wider scale issues as to kind of longer term problems that uh, maybe we can do something about. So, um, you know, a lot of the traffic on the mailing list is just how do I use my uh, word processor, how do I use uh, spreadsheets, how do I fix this equation, kind of general stuff like that. So, a year plus of suggestions and please some help for people on general topics. So, we try to find out what people are doing and um, kind of where they look first in the menus for, for, for those problems. So, if they couldn't do something, we invest them, you know, what way are you used to doing it in, in previous software, what previous software have you used, and where did you look first? And then try and basically put the solution that is best for them in the first place that they looked, so that the next person that comes along just finds it immediately. The way we work is that we uh, fix those implemented features and we make experimental builds with all those fixes in them. And we make them available to people internally that want to use our internal experimental repository of the browsers. If that works out okay, we're uh, closely enough teamed with the internal IT department and they generally take the builds that we provide experimentally and if they pass muster, they turn it into the corporate standard build, which is what everybody gets to use. If nothing terrible goes wrong with our efforts. And then it becomes IT's problem to maintain that version. So we are currently not in the process of maintaining the experimental builds that we make available. It's up to internal IT then to take on responsibility for um, uh, managing that. So what kind of stuff have we done to date? We have just the very generic stuff that's hardly even really worth mentioning, but just it is there and it is a large percentage of our time. It's just fixing ordinary bugs, it's ordinary crashes, ordinary problems. And then a lot of work difference I could do is that people have done stuff on previous versions of the spreadsheet where equations worked generally by chance, something changed, and those valid equations no longer give the same results as they used to. So it's reworked the equations into what they should have been all along, trying to figure out what they were doing. So that's not really kind of anything that we can kind of put back into the product, but it does take our time. The general stuff, how to use the suite, and then general bug fixing. So the more uh, highlight ones we've had in the last couple of months were terrible scoring performance under Web 6. It's not so obvious in the more modern versions, but it's more obvious under the older unaccelerated X that we had on the internal machines of a particular group inside, inside Red Hat. Um, some issues where the dates were out by four years and then crashes where you paste into the outline view in, in press. All these kind of general, general, general problems which aren't as uh, immediately obvious, uh, which were not immediately obvious to us before we deployed them and then we find them wrong. So just general crashes, general problems. That takes a lot of time. But outside of those then, these are the kind of features that were requested from internal people and the complaints they have what we did about them. So this is for people who are coming from Excel and they have a, a, a huge number of sheets where normally to navigate to the sheet you click left, you click right inside the uh, hidden area there. But when you have a large number of sheets, what they want to do is right click on that area, go up and down a menu that shows you all the sheets. Not a really difficult feature, but it actually was one of our uh, LibreOffice's easy hacks. And uh, we implemented this because it was a request from internally inside the, uh, the um, finance department. That's Calc, Finance Department. Um, these are people that are using virtual machines to test um, uh, the desktop. And the virtual machines come in by default, so it's really low resolution, the same kind of resolution you get on notebooks. And when they try and traverse across the menus, the menu placement used to be that it would place it whatever would give you the largest bounded menu on the screen. So it would position the menu to the right of where you are. So you're on the file menu, the file menu won't fit here, won't fit there. So it positions the whole thing on the right here. So if you try and traverse across the uh, menu bar by clicking right, your cursor will go from file to page preview and then you can't actually go to uh, the next entry there. And so we just reworked all the menus so that when they're placed, they will place either above or below if they can't fit. And then you just uh, scroll, the menu scrolls if it doesn't fit in place. The problem is, on my notebook I can't go left and right. Uh, to traverse the menu bar, we have to find out that the resolution isn't um, uh, sufficient to allow it to fit in and uh, solve it that way. We need to do something similar for the smaller drop downs that we have on like uh, the list boxes, like uh, the font list box and other ones like that. A lot of cases we will still place the menu to the right hand side when we should place it above or below. Um, next one then was a far more significant feature uh, comments and margins. We implement this one and it's available for everybody in 4.3. Uh, it's a big internal uh, complaint, I'd write out. 
turns out that uh, our busy execs communicate to each other in comments in document margins. Uh, they print them out and they read them and they're in the air. So uh, they're on their airplanes and they like to uh, read comments and uh, hand them to other important busy execs in the front row. And this one here is, uh, uh, it's not so obvious here, but that's, that's the PDF output of the final feature. So the solution here is that you shrink down the entire page by about uh, to 75% of its original size. That's small enough to bring the margins, which are not actually on the uh, printable sheet of paper, to bring them inside the printable area, and then you center the whole thing, and you end up with uh, something that is still readable, although uh, uh, smaller in size, and your um, comment notes appear inside. That gives you uh, uh, the addition here in the print menu. When you go down to print comments, you can select from all of the traditional locations and then you can get this, uh, uh, this new place and margins ones. Uh, there's a couple of um, problems still with excessive use of comments. If you have comments that are, like, they, that, that are I I extremely long, then you end up with a scrolling uh, comment thing in the uh, user interface, which is not so easily printed. So for the moment, what just happens is that you get a little truncated tick, tick, tick at the bottom to let you know that your comment is truncated. We could possibly hook up the truncated comment thing with the other abilities here so that uh, the comments are shown in the margins, they get a little asterisk at the bottom of them, a numbered one, and then we go and fall back to the um, place the comments at the end of page on the next page with the remaining half of it. But we haven't implemented that yet because none of the execs that are involved in this process so far have complained about long comments, they just want comments. So uh, you don't get long comments until somebody needs it. But executives, do like their comments. Uh, format all comments. They like to change all the size of the uh, font used in all of their comments, maybe just to shrink them down so that they do fit in a single page mm -hmm. and then print them out that way. And again, in the past, you'd have to select it every individual comment one at a time. Now you can select all comments and do it in one sweet go. You also change the default size of the comment font. It used to be based on a 10 point UI font. Uh, which is typically something which isn't really suitable for printing. But now it's based on a 10-point version of the default normal style, which is pretty much the same as what Microsoft worked with. So you've got a better improved uh, compatibility there with Microsoft Office straight out. Next more kind of intriguing one is inside in Impress, where we're getting complaints that it's hard to navigate in Impress because when they're um, it in a slide, the slide moves around, and once the slide moves around, it's very hard to use the scroll bars to recenter it again. So, uh, while it is still unclear to me what exactly are the steps, and I've tried to follow it up on it quite a bit, what exactly are the steps that people are doing to make their slides shift into strange locations, it's definitely much easier to give them a one click solution, like you do get in other products, to recenter that slide and to size it optimally to the available space. So we have a one click on, I think it's 4.3 as well, just on the left hand side of your uh, uh, zoom area there. And also as well, then we built in some extra stuff that isn't obvious, so that when you're on one slide and you're off center and you move to the next slide, or you change your zoom, or you do any number of things like that, then it automatically centers the slide anyway. So if people have come into some kind of confused state, then pretty much anything they do to change zoom or to change slide or to do whatever will do what they probably want to happen as well along with the fumbling so they can fumble and they'll get the right effect as well more on slides over on the left hand side where you um, select slides for which ones do you copy which ones do you delete the classic one here is that when you place your mouse over a slide it gets colored like that uh, it's colored like that even if the slide is selected or not selected. So if you selected slides 1, 2 and 3 and put your mouse over slide 2, or you've selected slides 1 and 3 and just happen to have your mouse over slide 2, you get exactly the same uh, visual effect. You don't know which one. If it's 2 selected or not, you can't tell. Again, we change this over here so that if it's um, unselected, you just get a, a very, very subtle invisible on the overhead um, uh, uh, shading for a unselected slide and with mouse over. 
and versus the selected slide with mouse over. Again, the, the, you probably can see in that one there, but there is a visual distinction between the two different cases. And you can see the term in which one your mouse is over, but that has a much lower priority effect than the actual effect of being selected. So now it's obvious that you're selected or not selected, and it's certainly if your mouse is over or not. Being a mouse being over it, it's far less priority than when it actually is being selected. Uh, the most recent one, I can just finish this off last week maybe. Um, Timestamps in calc, um, control plus full colon and semicolon in Excel will give you uh, short, will give you time and date stamps, long ones or short ones. It, traditionally inside in calc, uh, clicking those gives you the full, full date, including um, year, so give, give you full date and time. Turns out that what people want to do when they come from a background where they're typing notes into their spreadsheets and they're along to say on date X customer lab and they just type in control plus for that date customer reported issue chunk product was shipped chunk and they just do that and we're being told that what people are doing is they're still using that shortcut that they are got the muscle memory from from Excel typing the shortcut and then manually going back and deleting the extra part the timestamp part of it instead. And also there's effects there that they could just type it, continue, they'd have to actually type it, type some text, then go back to the timestamp, then go after the text again and continue. It's just straightforward enough now, you just do what you, ex you just type in the uh, Excel um, uh, shortcuts and the right thing happens. It's like it's built in all sorts of complicated extra bits onto it, basically. What you expect to happen, happens. Other ones, Template detection, if you put templates inside the traditional, not traditional, the new uh, XDG templates directory, they'll automatically be detected in your office and they'll appear inside in your templates along with the ones that come from the traditional uh, your office location down below in .config. You'll get your standard, you'll get templates in the standard location, it will appear as well. Now we're going to try a video, which is very brave. Yeah, okay, watch this now for uh, a car crash in, uh, in press. This is Maureen Duffy, uh, did this one up for us. So the bug involves the object area for auto layouts, it kind of weird. What you're trying to do here is go into master view and remove the bullets from the outline view there, go back to her normal view and have no bullets anymore. So you see you've got bullets here, so I'm trying to get rid of those bullets. So initially she's trying to apply the styles over there of notes and subtitle to those bullets, but you can't do that because this is a preview of the outline uh, styles. You can't apply another style to the outline styles. You can only edit here to update the styles there, or update those styles to change here. She tried to delete the whole outline area, but that doesn't make sense. You can't delete that because it doesn't have any effect. It's like trying to delete outline 1 to 7, which can't be done. Still trying to remove the bullets. Doesn't, doesn't make any sense. 
now she's over in some other style, and it just gets worse from here. <laughs> okay. So that's not great. That's not great. So the point there is that master view really, really, really confuses people. Uh, the master view of that outliner, uh, of those bulleted outline paragraphs, is an interface to edit the actual outline styles on the other side. So you've outlined one to seven or one to six. You, you can't just delete that whole box because that doesn't make any sense because, again, it's a preview of those styles. So what I've done, what the changes I've made and they come up in 4.4 .4 is that that whole area becomes read-only. You can't select it and delete it because it doesn't make sense. You don't allow what's nonsense to happen. There is one case where you can delete things from it that does make sense, is that there are like um, nine outline levels that you can display. And what, the number of outline levels you leave in that preview is the same number of outline levels that would be shown as the preview in the actual normal view. So nine, level, nine depth levels is too many, so normally we set it to about six. But if you want to actually increase it or decrease it, you have to hit return and go to the next line in that view. So now that it's read-only, what you do is you right-click on the last paragraph in that uh, preview mode in the master view, and it'll allow you to show another outline level or hide the current level, and you can hide back up to one level or show all the way down to level nine. Right-click there and still trim the depth of the preview show. Then the actual button that you did use that made the preview lose its button uh, by removing it from the depth at which it shows bullets, now actually does the, continues to do that thing in normal view. But in the master view, it is deliberately selected to go and find what list level we're looking at and update the actual style underlying it to have no bullets. So it just works. She just clicks on the button to remove bullets, and bullets are removed from the underlying style. So it'll just work from now on. Now, that's what's done. Well, it's not done um, that uh, we kind of get frequent enough requests about that they're on my radar. The master slides are still, still an issue if you looked at that there. Nobody understands the relationship between master slides, styles, and layouts. And I guess not, I don't even fully understand it either in the sense of how it's. Presumably somebody had a vision for how they're all supposed to work together, but I'm not convinced. So one issue is like, how do you bundle layouts into document templates? How do you like have nice layouts as we now have on the right hand side and transmit them to other people for them to, um, to, to, to use? And how can you make that part of the master view? So when you're designing things in master view, you can design layouts at the same time and then it just, you know, it all just works. We well, can definitely at least improve, improve the relationship between um, in master view, you can improve the relationship between styles and what we're looking at. What you saw back there was where we have one master view slide that shows the outline levels, and you saw a lot of messing around at the subtitle and title styles. That's because you've only seen one preview. It should look more like this, where you have one preview that shows you on the right-hand side where all the uh, outline styles are, above where you have for the uh, title, but then you have some kind of a dependent slide which shows you where the subtitles are and additionally for the notes. So that when she, when in that example she clicked on notes, the cursor would automatically, well let's say a subtitle, she clicked on subtitle, the cursor would automatically had jumped down to the dependent side and you can see that you can't apply a note style to something else. You're clicking on notes, you're clicking on outline level X and you're actually transmitted directly in view to the thing that you've clicked on so that you can you get the, a better relationship, a better overview of the relationship between your styles on the right hand side and the previews of those styles on the left. And also give you a place where you can um, directly edit a subtitle slide, top, top, subtitle style, because there is no place at the moment. You can only edit the outlines and the title and not the subtitle. A view like this it would give you um, a solution for that problem. Not particularly impossible. And also I think we should get notes on there as well. Notes are a problem. Um, inside the note view, you can apply styles. You can use the you can use the actual style navigator, and you can go to notes. And you can add bullets to notes, but no bullets will ever appear in notes if you do that. Another problem. Another small one. Inside the press, you can right click in a graphic and 
change graphics, select a new graphic to replace the current one that's selected. You can't do that in Writer. An easy hack for that. There's some code pointers in there for how to do it. Again, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Templates. We have templates inside Writer, and we have master documents, but we can't have master document templates. Uh, we have a kind of a, a scenario that was outlined to me where it looks very plausible that it does make sense to have master document templates. You just have master documents that when you can store inside in your template manager, and when you edit them, you get the exact same effect as you do with templates. You get a, a new document with the same content as a template that it came from, but that it's not. Um, it's you have to save it as a new document at that point and not update the old one. Inside the um, navigation and writer again, you can promote and promote a chapter, but there's no particular uh, ability to select multiple headings and promote and demote them all at the same time. Again, it shouldn't be particularly hard. Uh, people are not coming from Microsoft Office as much anymore. We're getting a lot of people that are migrating from Keynote and uh, pages. So there's features from Keynotes that people miss, and one of them is guidelines. So there's a screenshot of what happens when you have one box text and another box title. As you move them around, the screen is blank, and then when they come in alignment with the center lines, become aligned, little yellow um, alignment bars appear. They also appear if you have moved your uh, object into the center of the uh, page, you again get these temporary little alignment arrows. We do have the uh, position and style information, the position and size information that's down below in our bottom bar uh, in Keynote and pretty much into everything now. All that kind of immediate information is right up there beside the mouse and being displayed as you move around at your eye point, not down below. We have a lot of good stuff that we keep in these status bars that are just far too far away from where people are looking. We should try and move them up out of there and right onto the screen near the mouse. Indicators for auto fit. That text box there is not in the font size that is reported. The font size that is reported is a much larger font size, but that text box is set to auto fit so that the text is shrunk in order to fit inside the available space. If you are a user, you click on that, it will tell you that the font size is font 23 or something. And you say it's too small, you try and make it bigger, you make it font size 25. It still stays the same size because it just auto shrunk by more and so on, and you're entirely frustrated. We try and make it smaller at a certain point, it's so small that it is below the auto uh, shrink cutoff point, and then uh, you can't figure out what font size you need in order to make it bigger. And it makes no sense because what you have to do is you have to make the box larger or turn off auto fit. And there's no visual indicator uh, in our product that tells you that. If you go to Keynote, at least they give you a small little X to indicate that it's an auto fit. That's not a particularly great solution either. Just having the word auto fit to the checkbox on the um, selected box would be a, an easier solution there. Okay, there's a few final thoughts on what's different about what I thought things were. Uh, uh, okay, so, Excel is still where people are coming from when it comes to spreadsheets. They, they want things to work the way Excel does, they want the same results as what Excel does, they want the same shortcuts as what Excel does. Uh, we're fairly okay in Writer, people understand how Writer works. They want extra bits from it, they want improvements in it, but Writer is something that they understand. Uh, where people are not happy with it, so it's, it's impressed, they don't get how Impress works, they don't get how Massive Slides work, you get Massive Slides in PowerPoint as well, they don't really get how PowerPoint works either. But where people are coming from when it comes to presentations, it's less and less uh, PowerPoint, and not, you get a lot more people coming from Keynote. A keynote is kind of important when it comes to looking for product uh, comparisons at this point for us. So there is good stuff we can, we can bring from keynote, like the obvious little indicator there. Uh, their master view is, 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 is better than our master view. Um, they don't have all the solutions either in that sense, but they do have some better stuff when it comes to uh, the drawing stuff, the, the guidelines, the grids, uh, issues like that. Special effects are easier, things like that. So. Impress really drives people really crazy. Uh, I think that the easiest bang for buck is to continue working on master view along the suggested lines there. Uh, add move indicators to the selected objects, all the stuff we had in the bottom status bar, try and migrate that up onto the selected object itself. And maybe the number one one is that the graphics 
Okay, so I wrote this presentation in a developer version in the hope that I could get my graphics to disappear out of the presentation, and they didn't disappear out of the presentation. But we're still getting reports that graphics are disappearing, so we need to make sure we find out why they're disappearing, don't crash, and don't lose graphics in presentations anymore. That is definitely the most important thing. I think that's actually it, and 27 is a lie. Yeah. Okay. Any questions?